Okay, I'm out on the Danza Trail and I have already sketched in my, um, a rough sketch of my composition. Um, I'll put a photo up of it later, um, what I'm doing. But there's this really nice S curve in the trail. So I would say for the first step of your, uh, this project where we're only going to be using burnt sienna and Windsor blue, we'll do a mix of those. We might add some raw sienna and yellow ochre in as well. Um, so we're going to use a limited palette. I suggest finding your scene. It can be an indoor setting or outdoor setting and sketch your drawing in first. That's the first step. To the left of my uh, drawing, I've done a series of color mixes. Um, I've taken French ultramarine blue, Windsor blue, and I've mixed them with burnt sienna, raw sienna, and some yellow ochre. Um, this is a great way to take a look at what you're going to end up with in terms of your um, colors, if they are going to end up being warm, or cool colors, um, it will help you to get an idea of where you're going with your uh, painting. Um, right now, in my color mix, I did mix up. I found that the French ultramarine blue, when mixed with the raw sienna, gives us a really nice um, desaturated, unsaturated, uh, wash that has some nice forest green tones in it. And so that's what I'm going to use for my uh, background cropping of trees. I'm just putting in a light wash. As you can see, I'm using the side of my brush. Um, experiment with your round brushes. Think about uh, using the side, you could push press with the tip. If you want details, you can use your tip to create a nice shape. I'm looking at the tree line. So you might use the tip to give you a nice shape, some nice organic shapes. I'm also going in with some water to soften this edge. So you can decide where you want to soften edges, where you might want to add some value. Now I'm looking up at my the edge here and we do have some trees that have lost their leaves. So I'm going to come in with uh, a mix of the French ultramarine blue and the and the burnt sienna. So here again um, it's this color here. French ultramarine blue mixed with burnt sienna give me, gives me this deep uh, warm ochre type. And I'm only putting in a very soft amount, just a little. I'm keeping my tones very light in the background. I don't want to get dark. Um, my goal is to just put in a very thin indication of that uh, atmosphere in the background. I may not even touch the edge here of this tree line because I don't want it to bleed into, I can always add color later, but I should really wait for this one layer to dry before go, I go into the next layer. That's something that you're going to have to learn with watercolors is patience. You know, letting something dry. So you can see I put that, uh, this touch, this layer, and then it went ahead and started to bleed into it. So right now I'm, I'm starting with my lighter colors, my light background colors. I'm going to go in with a little bit deeper green here. Again, I'm mixing up a mixture of my French ultramarine blue. I find with the raw sienna creates a nice forest green. And of course you can, um, as you vary the amount of each pigment, you're going to get a diff different color. But I'm going to go, here we have a nice tree and shadow. We have some trees up in here. I could put detail in later, but right now I'm just 
working with big shapes. So that's, that's my process. I start large, start with the big shapes, putting in big, just looking at that, there's a large outcropping of trees. I'm gonna work with the big shapes first, once again, using the side of my brush for those big shapes. And then I can go in later with smaller shapes. And you can see here where patients did not pay, um, I wasn't patient enough, so I have some water dripping into this field and it's interrupted it. So first lesson I know better is just to be patient with some of these colors. If you want to soften an edge, just go in there with your brush and you can soften some edges. Keep in mind, create these shapes, but then you can always go in later and add on top of them. Notice how I added a little bit of water to this field of color and it immediately just wiped out some of that shape. So I'll let that dry. It's indicating a shape. Right now that's my goal is just to indicate shapes. Um, I'm going to now look at the path and well, the path is brown. I have this beautiful, right now out on the Danza Trail, everything is golden. The hills have turned to uh, some really beautiful raw sienna golden colors, some o yellow ochres, burnt sienna. So that's where this is a really nice palette uh, for what I'm doing today. So I'm going to go in with some really nice raw sienna and yellow ochre. Now that I'm changing to this nice warm palette, I'm gonna to have to clean my water. That's something to pay attention to is keep your water clean. Uh, if you don't, then some of that muddiness, we've got some really nice golds, golds going on here and browns. As I move into that area of the painting, I don't want, I don't want those greens or blues to get into my golden areas because that will just muddy it. Um, you want to be really decisive with the color that you decide to use. So I'm just changing out my water. When you come out to plain air paint, I have a whole setup. I'll photograph and show you. You do want to make sure you have plenty of water. Water for drinking and also water uh, to mix up your colors with. So I'm going to go in with my yellow ochre and raw sienna and put in some nice golden areas. Just give this a, a wash. I'm also being very careful not to allow wet areas to touch areas that are still drying. I see some nice things happening in the background. I'm going to add a little bit of this burnt sienna, the mixture of the burnt sienna. So we have some nice, there's an area of the hillside here that has a little bit more browns in it from the dirt, from erosion. Allow that to come down into the path. So once again, for the path, I'm using burnt sienna. Mixture of burnt sienna and French ultramarine is what I'll use for the, the dirt area. And then for the golden hillsides, I'm using a mixture of predominantly raw sienna and yellow ochre. Put my wash in and remember that I can go over these washes later. If it's dripping, you can pick it up with your tissue or your brush. 
And my goal is just to put in kind of like an underpainting of this gold, golden color. As we get closer in the foreground, the colors get deeper and brighter. So that's what I'm going to pay close attention to. I'm going to allow my colors in the background to remain light as a tint. As you see, I'll go in and add a little bit of water in there. Let those be a tint. And then I'll allow the colors in the foreground to be brighter and richer. I have a nice shadow from the tree coming down in here. So I'm going to allow this foreground shadow to get deeper and richer. And as the path comes toward us, just add more warmer colors. As I put in these fields of washes, the what I'm doing right now is I'm focusing on just putting in washes. As I'm doing this, I'm paying it close attention to the shapes that I'm making. So I have a nice cropping of dry grass here. I'm just going to allow this to get bright. And then I also have an, a tree off to the right here. So I'm going to mix up some of the French ultramarine blue with the burnt sienna and that gives me a nice brown color that would emulate the color of bark which is this color right here I do have this tree I'm just going to indicate the branches Here again, using the tip of my brush, you can push and pull back with your brush, allow it to spring back. And I def I want this, I want to move in to the picture plane and out of the picture plane. So I'm thinking about that from a compositional standpoint as I work on the the direction that these branches are going with the tree so we have this golden hillside that comes down and then these branches go off and later i'll add to these branches some golden leaves because they're drying out now this tree will dry lighter. I might add some water to give those branches some dimension. So just by adding water, it will, rather than being a solid shape, you could see where light can filter in. So I drew the branches in then added a little bit of water to soften that thicket. Getting a little indecisive in here, so I'm going to pick up some of that paint. When you have colors blending together and you're not sure what's going on, you can pick it up. Okay, so I've put in the tree line, the foreground tree. Now I'm going to work on the path. So the path mixture, it's going to be a mixture of the French ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna. Once again, I'm going to start light. 
and I'm of I'm avoiding allowing my colors to touch each other yet because this is still pretty damp. So as I look at the path, I'm looking at how it's variegated. You're going to see rocks in it. Uh, you're going to see value changes. So we've got some of the path up here that's still damp up there. So I'm going to have to wait for it to dry. And then I can put a big wash for this path coming toward us in the foreground. Now where the path is beaten, the, the value of the path is lighter and when, where there's a lot of rocks, the path is darker and there's some shadow areas. So once again, I'm just using the side of my brush to put in just an indication, once again, a wash. So I'm starting my painting with really just three washes. So we're still at the beginning stage. I'm just putting in three light washes. All of these are a mixture of, I haven't even brought in the Windsor Blue yet, um, but right now what you see is a mixture of this background color is a mixture of the French Ultramarine mixed with raw sienna. This path is a mixture of the French ultramarine with the burnt sienna. Um, and then these golden tones in the hillside uh, that's predominantly a mixture of raw sienna and yellow ochre. So those are really the only colors that you will need to use. I brought in the Windsor Blue just to see what colors I could get. The Windsor Blue gives us this green. Um, but if you stick with your French Ultramarine Blue and you mix it with your Burnt Sienna down here, it's going to give you this really nice series of rich browns. Um, this cooler color here, once again, was the French Ultramarine with a little bit of the burnt sienna thrown in there. Okay, I did a little bit of a test up here of a mixture of the ultramarine blue and the uh, raw sienna. And I'm thinking of just going back in and adding to this tree line. Uh, this is a very small painting. Um, keep in mind, this is just an exercise so this is about four by six inches. Um, I, it's just an experimental exercise, trying to stay within a limited palette. And so I'm going in just with my, uh, my round brush, my size eight round brush, and just putting in little uh, textures to indicate the shadow area of the trees in the distance. Now, if I wanted those trees to lighten in some areas, I'll do this, I'll go back in later. I'm looking at this nice, um, there is an edge there. I can add a little bit of water and that's going to soften that color so it's not too dark in the background. So I can then go in, add a little bit of water here and that it will desaturate that color but here we're, we're keeping everything light, but I'm going wet on dry. I'm going back in. You saw I did that underpainting and I'm just going in to add a little bit more variety in this background with my detail brush. I'm going to add more raw sienna to that and this will give me a, a variety in tone. Actually, I have, I might do, put some green in here. So here I've got a mixture of the Windsor Blue and the Raw Sienna, if you want, wanted some very light green tones along this tree line. So we're keeping this palette limited. The reason we're using a limited palette 
is for color harmony. So you can see if you use just predominantly, right now we're only using three or four colors. When you mix those colors, you will find color harmony. It, they all will work well together. I'm gonna go in with some some of that um, burnt sienna and French ultramarine mix and see if I can close up this line here. So we don't need this white line. I'm just trying to create variety and the vegetation in this background area. And I'm doing it with my, the fine point of a round brush. Now I don't wanna draw attention to this background. I do wanna still keep it pretty thin and light. So I might go back in with some water. And you have to be careful, you don't wanna overwork it. We'll let that dry. I'm keeping these layers very thin in that background. Have our nice hillside here. Some brown brush in here. I'm trying to keep, I'm going to keep these shapes, hold them together. You don't want them to get too, you don't want this to be too spotty. So I'm going back in to allow this background tree line to all hold together and not be too spotty back there. And the deep shadows in these trees will allow me to do that. There's the bend in the path. Keep going back to my, looking at my landscape to make sure that everything is in, in line with what I see. You know, keeping in mind, uh, nature has a rhythm. So if you're off the rhythm with nature and you're sketch your drawing. If something's not looking right, double check and see if you're following what nature expects. Um, it's nice painting outdoors, plain air. Those are cows in the background, hungry cows that you hear. And the roosters trying to wake up the farmer. So I'm up early. Good thing to get up before sunset and get to where you're going when the shadows are not too dark. good about that background area. I will leave it for now. Um, I'm going to remix my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna for the foreground. It started to get a little muddy. So I'm going to create a new mix. Watch your mixes. If they do tend to get and I say muddy when the color is not distinct. So a muddy color is when you're not sure if that color is from the blue family. Now I see why my color is muddy. I'm looking at my water. So I'm gonna have to change my water out again. I noticed the colors were not mixing pure. So 
so you can tell a color is muddy when you can't tell what color it is when it looks just brown but you can't tell it what the foundation is if the foundation is french ultramarine blue if the foundation of the color is uh, burnt sienna if you start to lose your colors that's when it's time to change your water Okay, with the clean water, I should have a better mix. I wanted to work on the foreground tree. So I do wanna make sure I have a good deep color for that. Okay, so I'm going to, let me correct. So for that foreground tree that I'm working on, I'm using the yellow ochre with the French ultramarine blue. So the burnt sienna is a little bit too brown. I could use that brown. So this tree in the foreground goes all the way up and out the page. So I am using the tip of my round brush just to cr to move in the shadow areas. I'm looking only at the shadow areas of the tree. So keep in mind there's this nice branch. There's leaves above the tree. So I'm I'm looking at what are those shadow shapes. And that's what I'm doing here. So once again, to get this deep green, French ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, um, I made, I said burnt sienna. The burnt sienna is going to give us this nice brown. This green here is French ultramarine and yellow ochre and or raw sienna. So I want this tree to appear that it's in the foreground and that's why I'm much darker and I'll allow this tree to go all the way out the page. I'm using a combination of the tip of my brush and the side of my brush. Nice having that tree kind of go over into that background shape. Now right now this is a good color for the shadow parts of the tree. I can always go in with a warm green later from our mixes. So here what I'm doing, it's not really glazing, but I'm layering. So I'm just layering some color on top of color. So I had my underpainting with a very light wash tone. These trees just come down the hillside, keeping in mind the movement. So uh, what I decided for this piece was to use the composition of the S curve. And so what I'm doing uh, is I'm reinforcing that movement of that S curve. Um, I'll, I'll start to point it out. So the, this path starts up here at the top 
right. It winds around and then comes out and toward us. Um, we don't have a lot of shadows in there right now to indicate that curve. Now that I've put in my underpainting, I'll go in and I will start to do that. Um, so for that mixture, I'm gonna once again clean up my, my mixing area. I'm gonna clean up the well in which I'm mixing my color. Because if I'm gonna mix a new color, I wanna keep it clean. So when I look at the browns in the path, I'm probably going to use a mixture of the ultramarine blue, which gives me a really nice, uh, it warms, it actually cools the burnt sienna and then I'll bring some burnt sienna in there. And then I'll bring in a mixture of the, the yellow ochre. Okay, so this is just to pull in that, there's a shadow right under the edge of this cliff. I'm going to create this shadow area. And then there's dirt that comes down that has a really nice golden color. I have some shadows along the edge here. And some shadows. This is all along the path. And I may add some burnt sienna in here for shadows as we get closer for some warm shadows under the tree there's a really nice warm shadow under the tree so when you have a cool light source you will get warm shadows this might be too warm and some of this warm shadow area is on this side here as well. To be careful not to let those connect, it will change the color. I might wanna let that dry before I go in here. Keeping in mind watercolors, it's all about patience. You, do, you should let some things dry before you go back into them, before you layer them. I'll let this join together indicate the base of the of this little hillside. There's a little knoll here. And the same thing happening over here. It's a shadow area where the light is not hitting and the brush along the path is in shadow. There would be an indication of glazing I have some tree shadows coming in over. Coming down this path. There's more trees up in here. in mind as you get closer your colors get deeper and darker so I may lift up the pigment you can do this with your brush or a q-tip I'm lifting up pigment in the background and I'm going to allow the pigment in the foreground to be more saturated this again enjoying the layering of those light values. Pick up some of this pigment and that will allow 
this knoll to fall to the background. So my background needs to remain light and my foreground can start to get a little bit brighter. Do it a very soft indication of the edge of this path coming toward us. It's just a simple shape right here. Keeping in mind, this is a small painting, so I'm using my the tip of a small brush. Now I have this really nice bend right here. Keeping in mind the S, my focal point is the direction of this path. So I'm going to, I'm just reinforcing this edge, this, this S shape. I have some nice yellows and brights in here. If I go in with a very, I'm gonna do a soft, soft shadow that might help to reinforce the path. So here, going down the hill, have some shadows that in, with my line, once again, I'm indicating we're moving downhill into that tree area. Allow some of those colors to blend together. I'll keep my colors in the background. Still pretty light. See some sun is creeping out and beginning to pick up on just a couple spots. Have to be really careful with what this edge is. I don't want to lose it. Lose what I have going on here. So I'm just putting in a little bit of golden color, but I don't want to lose the white area is creating that nice turn in the path. So I may have to go back in and erase it. That's something you really want to pay attention to is your whites. Uh, don't lose your whites. already having changes in color. The sun is coming up. I had a really nice marine layer uh, behind these trees and now the sun's coming up. We're getting a nice blue sky and that's going to happen. You have to decide do you want uh, what what do you want your piece to look like? Do you want to keep, keep it subdued? Uh, the feeling of a foggy day? Or do you want to put in that blue sky and brighten your, your golden tones? So now we'll go in with some details. This tree here is losing its leaves. So I'm going to just go in for the foreground and bring in some bright raw sienna, just indicating leaves in this tree. Again, I'm using this brush a lot. It's my eight round. And the leaves are sparse, so I don't want to get too busy here. There's a lot of nice light going through that tree. nice 
bright color will lead your eye to the foreground. And then I will reinforce that branch by mixing up that yellow ochre with the ultramarine blue. Actually, no, I mean the, the burnt sienna with the ultramarine blue will give me that deep brown to give me the edge of this tree branch. So it's coming up and over and out. Some coming in here. bringing our darker and deeper colors into the foreground. I want these front, these, this tree not to be fragmented, but to feel that it is joined. I have a lot of gray, so I'll thin that out. A lot of little empty gray branches you can keep thin. They go up into that background area. Some go up the side of the mountain. Once again, I remember that I did have a glaze, or not a, a glaze, a yellow wash underneath this background area. And that, that glaze is helping, or that wash is helping to hold all this together. And as I add a little bit of water in this tree area, I'm allowing some of these colors just to blend together to create some sense of unity. unify this this tree and the the leaves that are falling here I'm going in wet on wet with that this is wet on wet with the burnt sienna mixture burnt sienna and yellow ochre a sense of fall. I know we do still have a lot of golden areas in this, so as I go in with detail, I'm going to clean my brush and make sure it's clean, get the top of the water. And just kind of go into have some really nice tufts of dry grass that is golden. So I'm going to, as we go along the path, add in these tufts of grass. And here I'll just layer the golden uh, combination of yellow ochre, raw sienna, and burnt sienna, just for this foreground area. Here again, since I want to work primarily with warm tones in the foreground, I'm going to clean my water again. Okay, so the sun is coming out and now I have some big shadows that I can decide to put in. I'm going to take the risk and just put this shadow in as it comes down the hill. This would be a form of glazing. and then spills over 
the hill here. Joins our path. Now the shadows are more distinct as the sun peeks in and out. Shadows are really wonderful because they can lead your eye through the painting. So to the left, I have some, the sun is rising uh, in the east to my left. So we're on the shadow side of the hill, which was intentional to get out here. And then this shadow is spilling over the trail. You can see how the shadow can really unify now that we have our shadows coming in, it can help to accentuate that path that's coming toward us. It's really nice having that shadow spill across the path. It's really helping to pull the whole painting together. Here again. Shadows can give a really nice shape, create some really dynamic shapes. And to create this shadow color, I used a mixture of the burnt sienna and the French ultramarine blue. You can look at the, what's happening with your shadow and wherever the, there's a change in the tone, I notice it feels a little cooler up in here. You can just add some pigment um, to certain areas of your shadow. So I put the shadow in and then you can actually go in with pigment. I'm gonna have this shadow come toward us. Give it a cool edge. There's a tree up on the hillside casting. This is a combination of the hillside and the tree. Casting a really nice shadow up and over the path right in front of us. And I have some nice gold sun peeking through so then I can go in with my, so we've got the sun peeking through Careful not to let these mix up too much together. This is something that you could go in after once your shadow dries. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, some cool tones, some of that ultramarine blue into the foreground of this shadow as it comes towards us just to add interest. Keeping in mind this movement, I'm moving from left to right, and then we're going over the edge of this path here. I'm gonna bring in some of my golden tones. tones of the path here. Okay, so then you will, I'm gonna let that shadow area dry. Um, I see some areas where I can go in with a little bit more yellow ochre along here. Really bring out the, that golden hillside.
careful not to overwork, but I notice we've got some sun spilling over in here. And then picking that up. Some of that shadow is still uh, wet, but it was feeling a little bit flat, so I'm bringing in some more gold. And then once again, that's, that's the call of the artist. So, I don't want to overwork it. Pick up color where you need to. Don't want to lose your nice transparencies. Pick up a little gold in here. Soften the path here. Continue that path. Okay, so you're going to let it dry, and if there's any other details that you need to put in, take a second look at it and go ahead and put those details in.